What's up runners? Coach Holly here and I am telling you all of my fixes for your foot blisters. I have spent the last year going through everything, doing my research to figure out why I was having such bad problems with rubbing in my shoes. There are a lot of things that I found out went into this and so I'm gonna share everything with you in a nice snappy way so that you can go apply one or more of these things to your own running. But just know that I love my distance running. I love being out there for hours on the trails and I'm only signing up for longer things at this point. So I knew I had to get it dialed in. Let's jump into that first tip. Okay, so first thing you wanna do is make sure that the shoe you're in was fit to the foot you have when you're running. So what I mean by that is a lot of us go into these running stores, we get fit for this shoe, but we might be shopping at the time, we might have just gotten out of the car, we're not swollen, we're not hot and sweaty, we're just getting our shoes fit to a foot that's not the one we have at the top of that hill when we're in the middle of a run. We are not swollen in that way. And so you have to make sure that you are getting fit to the foot that you're going to have in the middle of that workout. The way that our body cools itself is it sends blood out to the extremities. So to our hands and feet, that's why they swell. They take that extra blood, it gets pushed out. It's a bigger, wider foot at that point. Mix that with the fact that the best way you can land in your shoe is having room for that toe splay. So if this is my foot, ideal way to land when you do come down is having space to spread the toes, splay the toes out each time. Better opportunity for more absorbed impact. You're not gonna be landing on this hard position where your foot's just crunched up in that shoe. You're gonna have more places to put that pressure, that impact. So you want space for that toe splay and you want to have space for that full swollen foot. So first thing I did was looked at what I liked about my current shoe. So I have been running for probably three or four years at least in the ATR Challenger. This is the three, but I also have tried the four as well from Hoka. While I love this shoe, there's so many good things about it. I noticed that like one common thing that kept happening was my baby toes just were never not pressed up against the sides. It was into my nail bed, it was like rubbing on the sides, like even after not that long of a run, like for me, six to eight miles shouldn't be pushing it at all, and it was, I was getting rubbing there. So I noticed that like for me, the width was just not there. Whatever was happening in the middle of that run, I didn't have the space. So I went into my local running store, SFRC, SF Run Co., in the Bay Area, and I basically told them like, I need a shoe that does what these did, but I need it, I need wide. Like, I just need things to be wider to see if I can just give myself the space from the width. So I looked at their speed go, and again, none of this really has to do with one shoe being good and one shoe not being good. This is just making sure that for you, you are in something that gives you the space. So I ended up trying the speed goat and I asked for a wide. I was like, does it, before I even tried it on, does it come in a wide? And it did. So I did that. I've been trying this for a while now and I'm really feeling like I have the space. The baby toe problem is not there anymore, at least from that side. I also looked at an ultra. I'll drop the links to everything down below, but basically I tried these out too. And I only did it because I knew that ultra does the wide square toe box as their signature anyway. So I was like, okay, I've heard that these are wider, they give you more space, they were designed to match that really flattened foot position. Try both of these things out to at least from the shoe department, know that I'm giving myself the most width that I have possible. Okay, it's definitely not all the shoes problem. It is also how you're landing when you run. If you're someone who overstrides, you take those big clunky steps, or you just have a very low run cadence in general, meaning you take very few steps per minute, you are spending more time on the ground than the person who has a higher cadence. So when you land, your shoe hits the ground, your foot keeps sliding, that creates a lot of friction. Land, slide, land, slide. The longer you give your foot to do that, the more friction you're gonna feel over time. And you're taking thousands of steps in any one run. So imagine that really, really adding up. Thus, you get those blisters. So for me, I noticed that if I could pick up my cadence and get my, cadence numbers up so that I was actually landing for less time each time I hit the ground, I gave myself less opportunity to slide and create those blisters in the shoe. So outside of whatever is on your foot, you need to be looking at what you're doing when you run. And so there are a lot of great drills for this. I just basically added in a couple of drills to my warmups on a couple days of the week. This wasn't a big commitment, but it was something that got me thinking about what is the best way for me to land so that I'm not adding to my blister issue? And it really made a huge difference. I'm looking at higher cadence numbers across the board now, even on those like steep 
uphills on the trails, I'm just noticing I have a much better understanding of picking my feet up quicker. So make sure that you are looking at that and it doesn't have to be a huge time commitment per week, but you wanna make sure that any shoe you're picking, you could still be getting blisters if you're not looking at how you run. So tons of drills on our channel, check them out if you need help there. It'll just make your running hurt less too, which is amazing, but that's a huge thing you have to think about. Okay, so while you're working on that run form, increasing that cadence, I know I'm still working on it, but it's changed a lot over time. I had to do something in the meantime to minimize those blisters because they were still killing me. So I looked at my socks. I know that the sock is supposed to serve as a barrier between your foot and the shoe, but for me, over time in, in certain pairs of socks, I realized they were just shifting around my foot. That was creating just as bad of rubbing as if I just didn't have a sock on at all. So I wanted to look at why that was happening. I had a couple of theories around potentially drying my socks versus not, drier sheets making them more slippery. I didn't use fabric softener, but it's possible something in there was just causing them to just not be what they were when I first got them new. One thing that definitely helps with merino wool and any kind of a wool fabric is you definitely need to air dry it and not put it in the dryer that helps but basically I just was like this isn't doing it so a couple things I did z-sorb powder this is something that I love this is something that just minimizes moisture in the sock and it pretty much stops it. it it almost serves as like an inner grip for the fabric so what I do is I take the sock open it up and I'll just drop a couple shakes in here I'll then close the top of the sock shake it and then I might even reach my hand in and kind of like swirl it around, make sure that it's spread through the sock, and then I'll put it on. If you're using this tactic for race day, I've actually heard and read that doing your socks with the powder before you go to bed and then sleeping in it that way gives you your best shot at it really staying put the next day. I even use this stuff under my sports bra to also minimize the moisture and the rubbing. Very cheap, it's on Amazon, I'll link it down below. Second thing that really made a difference for me, and of course, you know my toes were the problem, the baby toes, I also was getting some like rubbing in between my toes. So I looked at the Njinji toe socks, there's a ton of different versions of them, but basically, it's exactly what it says, it's the toe sock you can see here, just having separate areas for your toes already putting a barrier. So without having to do band-aids or anything like that in between, you're just giving yourself a better shot at your toes not rubbing against each other. I didn't know I would like these this much, but they have made such a world of difference. You can get them on Running Warehouse. I'll drop a link down below too. I mean, really so many places, but they make different versions too. Like I have a higher pair for the trails. This is the wool version. So this is gonna be a lot thicker. I love them. They're awesome. And then they just help basically make it so that the skin cannot rub against itself, which is great. So that is it on the socks. Play with things, of course, for yourself, how you're washing them, how you're drying them, but the powder helps for sure. And also just putting a little extra barrier between the toes for sure. What kind of ultra runner would I be if I didn't roll out the big guns for those of you doing those ultra and trail races and needing the best defense possible against those blisters? So first thing you're gonna do is buy this book, Fixing Your Feet by John Von Hoff. I will link it down below, of course, but this book taught me everything I needed to know about best preparing my feet for a long day of unknown. And what I mean by that is I have done races where we had 10 plus creek crossings where you're soaking your feet completely, running in hail, snow, rain, sleet, very muddy conditions, going steep downhill, steep uphill, you don't know what's coming. And this technique in this book worked for me to keep my feet completely dry the whole time. And so what you're gonna do in the book is learn how to best tape your feet inside the sock, inside the shoe, to really add that extra layer of protection. The main things I learned is that the Kinesio tape, which he recommends in the book, you kind of see it here. This is what the, the doctors use to kind of tape different body parts to hold but still move in directions they want. If you're kind of fixing run form or taking some tension off something that's hurting someone, this is the kind of tape they use. It's very thin and stretchy and you can cut it super easy to be whatever size you need. So this is super key in that. And the best way to make it stick is using this Benzoin tincture swab. It's basically a big Q-tip with this substance that you put it on nice and light over the area that you wanna put the tape on, you let it dry, and then you put the tape on, it sticks forever. I've had it last for over a day easily. He shows you how to do everything in this book. The best thing that I learned was that taping is supposed to work as a second line of defense against blisters. If you overdo it and overlap the layers, the pieces of tape, which a lot of us do, what ends up happening is it just pulls on where you already taped. So it's kind of undoing everything that you wanted it to do. What you need to do is lay, paste, pieces of tape flat on the skin and make sure they're only 
touching each other lightly and not overlapping because you ultimately want the tape to stick to the skin, not the tape to stick to the other tape. So that sounds complicated right now, but if you read it in the book, it all makes sense. He shows you what to do for every part of the foot. You can even tape your entire foot. The last part of that, that Z-Sor powder again, I showed you guys always a second thing to do once you've taped your feet, just putting the powder in the sock to really make sure everything stays where you want it to. And like I said, I use this in other areas, kind of almost like a glide or like a agent to help against chafing in general. So you can kind of just put it to where you want to keep things dry, nice and nice and comfortable. So that's everything for the ultra runner community and anybody looking for those longer hikes, how you're going to minimize those blisters. This shit works. So look at that book. I'll drop everything down below. So you might be feeling a little overwhelmed at how many things you can do to mitigate the rubbing, but honestly, I tried all this stuff because I wanted to know the best possible way for me to not have foot blisters when I run. If I want to go out there for long days, I need to know what to do. So even if you take one thing away from this video, I hope it helps you. I hope it minimizes those blisters, keeps you comfortable in those shoes for longer periods of time, and hopefully we can all just run as long as we want. If you guys want more on that run form to help quicken that cadence and stop the overstriding so you get less rubbing when you land, click right over here. Nate did a quick five minute running form fix video. Super good. Everything you need to know about getting those feet quicker off the ground so you have less blisters overall. I will catch you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching.